Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome back to Roblox Sugar. Have you ever flown in an airplane? Do you ever want to fly an airplane? Well, you're in luck because in today's video, we will talk about secret ways to build an airplane in Bloxburg 2021 update. Stick to the end of the video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Let's go! Increased throttle. The next peripheral a home pilot might want to add is a throttle. Many joysticks have desk-based saving built-in throttle capabilities like the Thrustmaster T-Flight Stick X joystick. However, there is another gain of realism by having a separate throttle quadrant. Another advantage of a throttle is an additional programmable button for more Hoda's work. The Thrustmaster T-Flight Hoda's X has a detachable throttle quadrant and the previously mentioned T16000M is sold with a stick and throttle combo. Before you begin, I would recommend starting with the basics before you take off headfirst into making a comprehensive flight simulation rig. Flight simulator peripherals aren't always inexpensive, and they take up space on your desk and in your room. Also, if you are thinking you might get more into flight simulation as you move forward, make sure that your initial investment is something you can build on instead of something you'll need to replace with better gear in the future. Yaw or no yawn? One religion of flying with which I never really was satisfied in the world of flight simulation is maneuvering the aircraft in the yaw axis. In an airplane, the rudder controls yaw and the rudder is controlled by pedals. Some joysticks allow a twisting action to control yaw in the simulator, but this takes away from the realism for me. I believe the cancelled Comanche helicopter had a twisting cyclic for yaw control, so maybe this is the future. It starts with the stick. For many home pilots, a joystick is all you need. This goes back to controlling pitch and roll with the keyboard it is so not fun. The joystick has been a ubiquitous since the early days of arcade gaming. The olden days, you might have a joystick with one button, and that button was usually the home base button on the stick. Flight simulation helped push the design of joysticks to the ergonomic and amazingly super programmable models we have today. Depending on your need for realism, there are two basic types of joystick design, universal and realistic. The universal type sticks are sleek and modern looking, with superb ergonomics and tons of programmable buttons and switches. A perfect example of the modern joystick is the Thrustmaster T16000M FCS Flystick. One advantage of the universal joystick is maximized programmability. Push Realism Are you a casual home pilot who likes to dabble in the world of flight simulation? Or are you logging dozens of hours every week flying around the world for a virtual airline? It is completely up to you how much realism you want to add via peripherals, and even diehard flight sim pilots can make do with just a single joystick, while others convert entire home offices into a virtual cockpit. Yokes or no yokes? I always found it odd to peer into the cockpit of a modern Airbus airliner and see a side stick controller. When I fly flight simulator or aircraft, especially a big Boeing or even a Cessna 182, I like to fly with a traditional control yoke. For me, flying with a yoke on which I can place two hands and push and pull to pitch my aircraft gives another level of realism. Oppositely, flying a Boeing FA-18 Hornet with a yoke instead of a joystick does not work for me, but if you are planning on spending hours in the virtual cockpit of a heavy, consider a control yoke. Screen or goggles. In the past, all at-home flight simulation was done on the screen before you. Now, multiple monitor rigs allow you to completely immerse yourself in simulation with screens dedicated to the outside view and interior control panels. The options are too numerous to mention here, but feel free to fill your room with the flat screen monitors and go flying. 
I can't hear you. Another way to increase your immersion is through sound and speech. Speakers are great, but if you want to really feel the hum of the turbofan engines behind you, the chatter on simulator air traffic control frequencies, and not be a bother to your roommates or significant other, headsets are the way to go. Now you can crank up the engine volume, hear the landing gear horn in stereo, and if you are a boom mic, you return to bass following a TC vectors. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I am sure that you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.